Hi, I'm Aurasync. Today I'd like to talk about building robots. But I haven't actually built any robots, so what's up with that? Well, robotics is hard. Robotics is very hard. Besides just being technical in general, it's especially hard because it's cross-disciplinary. You have to make a mechanical device, then you have to add electronics to make that device move, and then you need software to control how it moves, and that's, that's mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and software engineering at a minimum, three completely separate disciplines. And depending on how complex your circuit logic is, there might be some computer engineering in there too. Uh, in a commercial setting, of course, you'd have a team, but for a lone hobbyist, it's a pretty tall order. Even for a highly educated person, it's unusual to cross so many fields. I mean, maybe if you got into some kind of robotics program, but I wasn't so lucky. I mean, I tried. I did apply to some robotics programs, but I didn't get in. I got my master's studying machine learning and nonlinear optimization. It's really fun stuff, but that's all software. I've only recently started learning to build physical machines. So let's talk about that. How do you physically build a machine? Let's say you want to build a robotic arm. I mean, that's a common use case. You could buy a kit, but that's not what I'm talking about. We're going to design one. Let's say it's got to be tailored to some oddly specific task, so it has to be custom. There's going to be some electronics in there, but we're not even worrying about that yet. First, there has to be some physical thing that moves. I mean, maybe you can use some off-the-shelf parts for assembly, but at the end of the day, there's got to be some custom parts. And you're going to have to make those at home. How do you even begin to do that? Well, you could get an FDM 3D printer. FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. It's a machine that takes a spool of plastic thread, melts it, and lays it down one layer at a time to build up a 3D model. This type of 3D printer has improved a lot over the last few years, and they've gotten cheap-ish. Cheap enough, anyway. I've got a Prusa i3 Mark III. It's a great little machine that costs about $800 after shipping, with some assembly required. There are, of course, cheaper FDM printers available, but your results may vary. The rule of thumb I found is if you want to have 3D printing as a hobby, then buy a cheap printer. If you want to actually make things, then spend some more money. An FDM printer certainly aren't the only way to make custom parts. If you need to make things out of wood or metal, then a CNC milling machine is more appropriate. Rather than adding material, a CNC machine will start with a block or a sheet and cut away material until you get the shape that you want. I'll probably pick one of those up at some point to cut aluminum plates for some of my more demanding robotic components. Uh, in addition to FDM, there are also DLP and SLA printers, which use a vat of resin cured with light or lasers. Digital light printers can print an entire layer all at once with crazy high detail. They're super fast and accurate, uh, and there are a few in the same price range as FDM printers. Uh, I decided against purchasing one, because the parts they make have to be cleaned and cured under UV light, and they tend to be weaker. They're smelly and messy and more work, and I wanted stronger parts for my robots. I've heard they're popular for printing game miniatures, though, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Prusa MK3 is pretty good at printing miniatures, too, though. Uh, I printed this little boat, which is quite nice, as well as this very little pony, and a few Pokemon as well. So I have this Vulpix, and I'm particularly proud of this little Sylveon, uh, although I will say that required a lot of supports to print and some glue to repair after the fact. Uh, so obviously I've been having a lot of fun with my printer, but those are all just models I downloaded off the internet. If you want to design your own parts for machines, then you've got to learn special software to do that. <clears throat> I've been learning Fusion 360. It's a CAD program that's relatively easy to use, and they give out a free license to students and small businesses making less than 100000 a year. Uh, I'm not a very artistic person, so I've been pleasantly surprised with how easy it was to pick up Fusion 360. The core idea is creating 2D sketches from basic shapes, defining dimensions and adding constraints until your sketch is fully defined, and then extruding or revolving it into a 3D object. 
You can add more sketches on different surfaces and add and subtract material until you get the 3D shape you want. It also lets you assemble multiple parts and see how they would move together, which is great for making mechanical components. However, if you already know how to do artistic 3D modeling, like for games or animation, then you can 3D print those things too. But for someone who is more mathematical than visual, CAD software is definitely the way to go. Uh, I used Fusion 360 to design this mechanical arm. Uh, so I have a base over here that I can clamp down to a tripod or wherever. And then each of these limbs has a ball joint that is loose. And then once you get it into the position you want, you can tighten the screw on it. And then it becomes rigid. Uh, and then at the very end is a slot that I put my phone in. And then I put rubber bands around these little tips here uh, to hold it in place while I'm recording. And that works pretty well for recording uh, a demo game of uh, Angel Investor, the card game that I'm working on. Uh, I also designed this little roller for a sliding door. It's got two rollers that fit on an aluminum rod that I bought at a hardware store. And then this bolt goes into a piece of plywood. And uh, hopefully that'll be able to slide in front of the hold of my crawl space in my basement. All right, that's about the extent of my skill when it comes to making custom parts. Uh, I'm still learning how to design mechanical components. I picked up this book on mechanical engineering, which has been pretty good. Uh, there's lots of stuff in there about gears and uh, hinges and lead screws, etc. So that's all pretty interesting. Uh, in addition, I've also got this book on compliant mechanisms specifically. Uh, compliant mechanism is a fancy way to say flexible part. I'll have more to say about the topic of building robot mechanisms once I get further in my books or buy a CNC machine or, you know, actually build some robots. But I think this is a pretty good place to wrap up for today. I hope I've given you some ideas about how to get started learning to design and manufacture robots at home. Next time I'll go over what I've learned about electrical components and the various chips and circuits I'm planning to use for my first few robot designs. So subscribe if you're interested. Our sync out.